boy Danfall. We back and we live for episode 14. Y'all already know what that mean, man. I was just talking to the production team of headquarters media. Y'all already know who they are. You know, T and Dre. <clears throat> you know, and I was just thinking to myself, like, yo, we came a long way, man. We on the eighth episode in headquarters media, you know, studios. And um, I'm giving myself a pat on the back, yo. I appreciate all of y'all that's actually um, subscribed, you know, all 172 of y'all. You know, we came a long way. And also, uh, the people that have been watching all the previous episodes, man, we came a long way of the Dev Hall Show. And um, each and every episode, I'm going to remind y'all um, how happy I am of y'all. Um, but at the end of the day, we about to get right into it, man. I know y'all been seeing a lot of shit around the world, around the media. You know, we going from, you know, people standing up for 6 9 still. We going up from Cardi B saying that she drugged and robbed uh, men to survive when she was a stripper. A video that was surfacing around the internet uh, right now that was allegedly three years old. We're going from Jesse Smollett you know, charges being dropped like that. You know, all 16 charges dropped, you know. And then we going from <laughs> what's going on with the world. That's what we going from, you know. I'm trying to figure out something. <clears throat> you know, Cardi B, I like Cardi B a lot. Cardi B is, to me, the most relevant female rapper um, right now, I'm not saying the best because I know it's going to be a lot of people that's like, yo, Dev, yo, watch your mouth, yo, it's Nicki Minaj. A lot of people still love Nicki, you know, I understand that, but Cardi is the most relevant rapper. But we about to get into this Cardi situation. Cardi just recently um, been attacked. She's, be, she's being attacked for a video that surfaced three years ago of her saying that she drugged and robbed men when she was a stripper. And a lot of people is comparing this to the whole Bill Cosby situation. Now, when I was, you know, watching the video, I was listening, like, real carefully to what she was saying. And she basically was saying it was guys that would take her to a hotel or she'll go to a hotel, and she said she had drug and robbed them. A lot of people say, well, Dev, what's your thoughts on this, you know? It seemed like anything that I say on Instagram or anything that I say on my show and I post on Instagram, you know, people really want to get their conscience up or have the power of the urge to speak out as if I'm a, going to give them a grade on their opinion. I, you know, I don't know why, but I'm going to be careful and I'm going to get live and direct. The Bill Cosby situation and this Cardi B situation ain't no different at the end of the day. You know, why? Because the Cardi B situation, she said that she drugged these people. You know, she actually said it out of her mouth, you know, and she said it on camera, looking directly at the camera. And, you know, Bill Cosby, you know, he didn't randomly, he didn't just openly say he did it, you know, but he didn't say he didn't do it. You know, Bill Cosby is facing 10 years for this, you know, crime. Cardi B, she's actually getting platinum records, you know, Grammys, you know, she's all around, you know? And I had made a post about this a long time ago, like, damn, yo, we need some females like Cardi B, you know, like a down chick, you know? but. You know, at the end of the day, everyone have a past. I'm just not giving this a pass. You know, do she deserve some jail time and shit like that? No, I don't, I don't think she deserves no jail time because at the end of the day, people know what, them, what they're getting themselves into when you hire a stripper or you're doing something behind the scenes. You know, you know anything can happen at the end of the day. You're putting yourself out there. But for her to say that, it just showed me, like, well, damn, like, what, the f what won't you do? You feel me? Like... I don't know, like, I, I, be, <clears throat> I be thinking Offset need to be watching his back sometime, like, but he might, he might like that type of stuff, like, you got to think. Some guys like that type of shit. I don't, you know, mm -mm. No, excuse me, the only drug that you're going to catch me use, if I use drugs, and people call this a drug, is bud, but other than that, like, I don't, we not taking no pills, we not doing none of that type of stuff to have sex and then, you're going to rob me. Then she said that they were aware of this. She dated the people that she alleg allegedly robbed and drugged. That just don't make sense. But we're not going to attack her. You know, um, I'm not for that. It's a whole movement right now called the Men Too Movement. Not sure, sure if y'all heard of that. It's really a movement called the Men Too Movement. It's a guy um, I follow on the gram. His name is Ayo Kosenko, I believe. Um, the host of the Big Facts podcast, 
And um, I follow him heavy, and he actually started this movement. And basically, it's the same thing for the females. You know, how the females are, you know, being attacked, being raped, being drugged. And now he made a whole protest or a, a movement basically for the guys. I don't think a lot of guys gonna come out and say a female drugged them. I, I feel like a lot of men are a lot of a lot of men are prideful for that, you know, like you, you just won't look right, you know. And then will Cardi B face jail time for this rant or for this video that surfaced recently that was over three years ago, or will this get brushed under the rug? like everything else that happens in today's society. So we back. Um, we wanted to talk on this whole Justice Smellers situation, but before I get into this whole Justice Smellers situation, we have a special guest, you know. She goes by the name of Niche, you know. You may follow her on the gram or know her, know her on the gram of Niche215, you feel me? You know, and also, you know, she's the CEO of Niche's Kitchen. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Nisha in the damn building. What's up, Nisha? How you What's doing, Jay? What's up? How you feeling, y'all? Right? I'm chilling. You look nice, looking like Catwoman, all black. She here militant. Thank you. My you know, black color. power. She putting up for the Women's History Month. You know, I'm glad to have you here today. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about um, certain topics. Uh, I actually was just talking about this Cardi B um, situation about um, her previously having a video saying that she drugged and robbed men. And then we. We're going to move into this topic of Jesse Smollett having these charges dropped. Are you keeping up with this whole Jesse Smollett situation? Yeah, I'm familiar with the Jesse Smollett. What's your thoughts on it? What's, what's going on? He lied. Mm. Hold on, where? He lied. Okay, why you for that? How you for that? First of all, he didn't even sound convincing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the whole story just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. He lied. Okay. And the fact that now that it's all out, oh, that he didn't lie, but he had to pay, mm -hmm. this, like, it just sounds like a bunch of bullshit. Right. Now, by you saying he lied right now, you know, if he lied, why do you feel like the charges was dropped? Because money talks. Bullshit Bullshit walks. walks is a shoe fit, right? Listen. Right. Like, I had recently just made a post up um, of my old episode, my previous episode of Jesse Smuller, if he didn't lie. Right now, <clears throat> the reason I say if he didn't lie, because it is two sides to a story. At the end of the day, main man is something that I'm not, which is um, he represents the, you know, the LGT, you know, the L, you know, I don't even want to, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, he represents them. You feel me? And uh, they have different demeanors. They come off different. So people come like, oh, he lying, he fraud. You know, as a guy, we gonna, this boy tripping, yo. Boy, look at his whole demeanor. Look at he acting all flamboyant. Uh, my thing is, what if he was telling the truth, though? Because these drop, these charges, all 16 charges drop like that. It's making you think, like, were they trying to frame him? Or did he, was he really that desperate to get attention? You get what I'm saying? That's the thing. That's, that's the part that is hard to figure out because you were hearing stories about, like, oh, he was about to get kicked off of Empire. Mm -hmm. So he was thinking like, oh, he did it because of that. Okay. But then it was like, that wasn't the truth. Right. So it was like, what was the reason for doing it? So then now you're looking at it like, well, did he lie? Or, you know, but it just doesn't make sense. So I'm just saying that I think he lied. Right. Well, only thing that's confusing to me, to be honest right now, after these charges that was dropped, you know, he allegedly had this 16 hours of community service and paid a small fine to get everything erased from his record. That don't make sense to me. You know, now that's the only thing that's fishy to me. And that's where the people behind the scenes is putting in those words or the works um, behind the scenes to put the work in to make sure their client or their superstar is fine, AKA Lee Daniels for right. um, Empire. You know, Empire had allegedly removed him from the season you know, or episodes starring him in the season. That's what I heard, because I don't watch Empire no more after the second season started dying down, you right, feel me? I've been stopped watching Empire. You feel me? I, I don't know what's going on, but <clears throat> we're gonna get off of that. I wanna talk about this food. I wanna talk about why you're here. Um, and we're gonna talk about life, you know? We're not just gonna talk about Jesse Smollett. We're gonna talk about Nisha's Kitchen. So Nisha, what's going on? Like, what made you decide to become a cook or open up your own business? Well, I've been cooking since I was like nine years old. Okay. 
Okay. And um, I will always post food on Instagram, and people will always hit me up like, "Yo, right. that shit look good." Don't and mind I, me. Though. I, can Listen. I get a plate? Can I get a plate? Mm-hmm. So it was one day. I was I used to work at the airport, and I was a server here, and they came up with this shit like, "Oh, you know, we gonna start taxing your tips." Mm. So just imagine leaving from work every day four or five hundred in your pocket, and to leaving with. Ten dollars in your pocket because mm-hmm. they taking all your tips because all the tips are on a credit card. Mm-hmm. And that day I was just like, "Listen, fuck that shit. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start cooking." Mm-hmm. And I talked on the phone to my homie, and he was like, "Look, you ain't gonna never be a boss if you keep working for people." Right. And after that, it was a wrap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you being a cook though, what's your favorite dish? Um, I'll tell you, this chicken on the bean, but it's not, you know, it's chicken. What about? I don't know. I, everything is, I'm going to say turkey wings. Mm. I got a North Philly turkey wing. Okay. It's crazy. Crispy, tender, mm. all that shit. And it's popping. They look forward to Friday. That sound like North Philly and shit. Cause, Christmas. Cause that's, that's what I got in there. That sound like North Philly. They looking forward to Friday. Oh, shit. Got turkey wings. Right. Can I get them North Philly turkey wings? Oh, shit. Yo, Damn, I, like okay. that, I like the name now. I like the name. You got a special season. Or anything that they give you that name, or you just, it's just a description. You said they're fried and a, they're crispy, like, you feel me? Well, you know, I'm from North Philly. Mm-hmm. So I know the ins and outs. And I know me being a female, I got the tough side. Right. And I got the soft side. Right. So yeah, when you're you thinking about my turkey wings, like, it's all that. Like, <laughs> it's all that. <laughs> yo, hey, yo, you funny for that. Now, I definitely feel that. Now, uh, now what makes you different than all the other people that's actually um, <clears throat> that's actually having their own business by cooking on Instagram. Because it seemed like everyone in their mom, everyone in their mom is a cook on the gram. Like, what makes you different? Um, what makes me different is because I love what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my passion. I take it serious. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy knowing that my food is going to be good. So I enjoy putting in that consistency mm-hmm. for it to be good every time. Um, Ain't nobody fucking with me. There we go. That's that's the answer I was looking for. There we like, go. I, I don't mean no disrespect. I'm mm-hmm. not knocking nobody. I want everybody to win. Yeah. But ain't nobody fucking with me. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you why a lot of people might not be fucking with it. You got a, you got a license, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you got that shit going. I don't see that many people, you know, just because you don't, you know, post it on me, you ain't doing nothing, you know. Right. But, you know, I don't see that many people broadcasting that, though. I see a lot of people broadcasting, you know, paper plates. You know, you know, um, <clears throat> platter boxes and stuff like that, containers. You know, I don't in menus, but I don't see no one, you know, indicating that they putting that stuff forward to generate a type, some type of business. Now, speaking of business, do you um, envision yourself having some type of uh, store or a food truck or anything in, in the near future? Of course, um, multiple restaurants, multiple vegan restaurants, restaurants. Um, soul food restaurants, mm-hmm. bakeries. All of it. So this is just the beginning at this particular moment. Basically. Yeah, so um, we were speaking on the businesses and things in that sort. Now, by you having this um, establishment, Nisha's Kitchen, are you the only one that's working in the kitchen right yes, now? Yes, I am. I, I do have someone who may answer the phone mm-hmm. or run the orders, but for the most part, I'm doing everything. I'm doing the shopping, I'm doing the prepping, I'm doing the cooking. I'm making all the platters. I don't like nobody making my platters. Right. Because I've noticed when I let people make platters, they put in a little bit of food and I'm not paying attention. Right. And people are like, yo, I ordered a $16 platter and I don't have $16 for food in here. Right. And I know that's not a mistake that I made. Mm-hmm. So I definitely try to keep people out of my kitchen in that you know, way. Right, but right. other than that, ain't nobody complaining. Everybody coming back. And I was going to say that, I was going to say that. Now, how are the customers? Um, what's their reviews looking like? They love it. They do. They love it. And you know what I noticed, and the part that bothers me so much, is that people will rant and rave about you in your DM opposed to <laughs> on your page. On your page. That's a fact. Like, if you look at my DM, <laughs> I love your food, I love your food, I love your food. But I'm like, you haven't posted not one picture of my food. Mm. You haven't came, and not that I'm looking for you to do that, because I feel like I sell out every night. Mm-hmm. Every night. Every night the shit is going. Right. So I don't need validation. I don't need nobody to tell me, oh, your food is so good. I love it. Right. But I'm like, it's just so weird that I just see the people in Philly, like, they be quick to tell you how good your food is on Instagram in a DM mm-hmm. opposed to letting you know. 
But I know you gotta like it. You know what city we live in. You know what city we live in. You know it's called. I don't know for some reason support and Dicky and really like almost intertwined with each other yeah. for some reason. I don't know why. You know I don't understand why. Like um, for example, you were just speaking off camera about someone hitting you up from Detroit talking about your food. You know it's people that you don't even know showing love. All over. You know shit like that. Though. Like it, you know you just never know who <clears throat> is looking at your stuff. You know for example, I just uh, was just talking to my team about this. Uh, uh, Julius Jones, a former cowboy running back, even though I hate the Cowboys, been looking at my page, you know, liking my stuff, saying thumbs up, you know, stuff like that, you know, and it's like, damn, like, who would thought NFL players looking at my page, you know, or looking at the content I actually push out, you know, so for those that are interested in eating her food, you know, because um, I really don't want to seem, you know, ignorant right now at the end of the day, but I'm hungry, you know, and um, she's a cook. And on top of that, you know, it's a reason why she's here. You know, she's here to promote her food. She's here to promote her establishment. And on top of that, I wish y'all could taste this food, you know. Like, I really don't want to go back in the microwave right now and heat this type of stuff up right now, you know. She didn't want me to pipe her food up because <clears throat> a lot of people <clears throat> be piping people's food up without tasting it, you know. Um, it's a lot of establishments in the city. And I just asked her what makes her establishment different than other people's establishments. I feel as though this is the right time for young entrepreneurs, especially black entrepreneurs, to make their stand in the world. Um, I really wish her the best of luck when it comes down to this kitchen stuff, um, when the cooking stuff. But who inspired you to cook? Is it anyone in your family? Like, do, are you like looking up to people like Martha Stewart, or, or you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, um, uh, no. look, look, she got a phone order right now. You feel me? That's how much she buzzing. <laughs> but it's. You know what, I'm, I'm just one of them people, like, I don't really feed off of other people. Mm -hmm. I like people, I see what people do, and I, you know, give them their credit for it, but it's right. not like it's a specific person, and I'm like, oh, I want to be just like this person. Mm -hmm. Like, Chef Ramsay, he's one of my favorite chefs. He man. actually reminds me of myself, because no he don't take no shit, no picks. and he keep it 100, mm -hmm. and that's just me, you mm -hmm. know? I, I don't think no chef should be friendly, or should mm -hmm. be extra nice, like, that's just not what we do. Well. It is what it is. Like, if you have an issue with something, you should be able to address it with your workers, your customers. And I'm just really one of them type of people. Like, it is what it is. You mm -hmm. know, when you call me, you have an issue. And if it's something wrong on my behalf, I'm willing to fix it. Mm -hmm. But if you call me and tell me, oh, I called a half an hour ago and you told me, and I go look at the phone and you only called 20 minutes ago, like, this ain't that. <laughs> like, right. I'm working on that part. Right. That's why I have other people mm -hmm. to deal with the people. Mm -hmm. because so, you're, so you don't think you're a people person? Or you know you're I am. Person, you know right? what? I'm really, really a sweetheart, but mm -hmm. I just don't take no shit. Okay. And it, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mix with people that's trying to give me shit. Right. So it's like when it, when you get that, then you're going to get that side. But now I'm learning. Like you want to be in a business, you want to be in this business and you want to be a successful business owner, you can't give people your ass to kiss. So you can't, you know, you have to watch what you say. Even if you feel that way, you have to just swallow your pride. Mm -hmm. But I let them know that customers is always right shit. Mm -hmm. That shit went out the window when I came into business. Like it really did. Because right. they're not always right. right. Like I say, I got the people that call, oh, I called an hour ago and mm -hmm. you told me it was going to, and I look at the phone, you only called 20 minutes ago, miss. Right. So it's the it's the customers are not always right. No, and that's <clears throat> I feel like a lot of customers feel as though they use that to get over on people anyway, just to say yo, customers always right to throw it in your face. Like, for example, I, this is side to, sidebar, but like when people are crossing the street when you walk in in the middle of the street, no crosswalk. So you mean to tell me they had the right away because we see them walking? Like you mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Like that's what I said. They not right. You get what I'm saying? So I just hit one to compare that real quick, but. Um, what days are you open for those that are interested in purchasing some of your platters? Um, I'm open Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Okay. Um, and what are the price durations? Um, every Wednesday, oh, I have, from? Every so Wednesday I have $10 platters. Um, I do chicken and fish. Mm. My sides are always mac, cheese, mac and cheese, um, sweet potatoes, potato salad, and I always do a different vegetable. Okay. So I may give you string beans one day. I may give you cabbage one day, collard greens one day. But I switch it up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, is there any deliveries and things in that sort? Or we is all pickups? I don't have delivery right okay. now, so no. Okay. Um, what else I wanted to ask you? It was something pertaining to the food. Now, <clears throat> do you have any type of specials besides the $10 platters? Now, like, do you have a special, like, uh, 
once a month you you have something different that's outside of the menu versus what's on the menu every day. You get what I'm saying? It's always different. Um, Wednesdays is the only day that my menu pretty much stays the same. But on Fridays and Sundays, I like to switch it up. Mm. Um, like I say, the turkey wings is always on Fridays. Like that's mm. something that they really look forward to on Fridays. But I always do a different meat. So I may give you stuffed salmon. I may give you roast beef. I may give you pepper steak. It just depends on how I feel that day. Okay. Now I want to talk to you about some real stuff. We just got her food business out the way. You know, we're going to talk some real stuff. I want to talk about Instagram. I want to talk about social media. You know, and I um, always wanted to have this conversation with a female on air. I'm about this. Like, what's your perspective on social media as a female? But, um, because, you know, I follow you. And um, you're very entertaining on the gram, and, uh, and I see it in a respectful way um, by the thing that you say out your mouth. You know, you, you crack me the fuck up, to be honest <laughs> with you, you know. And, and when you're being serious, because a lot of people feel like when I'm being serious, I make them laugh. But um, in a serious note, um, how do you feel about social media? Like, as far as it, you know, taking over people's lives. I think it just lives. changed the game. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people just think that fake is what is supposed to be accepted. Mm -hmm and the real is rejected. Mm -hmm. So when I get on social media, I'm just being who I really am. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to cover nothing up for nobody. I'm not trying to make people like me. I'm not trying to have a filter on what I say. Right. It's a lot of gay shit going on. I like to talk about that because it's, it's actually the truth, right. you know? And I just feel like you get, I get so many guys who like niche. You gotta speak on this, go ahead. <clears throat> I get so many guys like niche, you always talking about gay guys, you always, but it's like, if you're not gay, why do you care? Right. You get what I'm saying? So obviously you're gay and I'm offended <laughs> you because you don't like what I'm saying. But I'm just being real. And it's, not, it's, it's nothing personal to any gay people because my brother is actually a transgender. So, and I have gay friends. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm not against gay, at, the gays at all. Oh, but this, 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 this little uh, undercover brother shit, yeah. I ain't feeling it. Right. That's some funny shit right I there. ain't feeling it. Now, I can't even... <clears throat> listen, it's now, crazy. You, now, now that, with that being said, it's a lot of people that's being exposed on the ground with this undercover brother... Mm, undercover brother. Undercover <laughs> brother stuff. And on and this, like, rat and shit like that. Like, like <clears throat> I'm trying to figure this out. Like, you might know some stuff that I don't know. Like, what are you finding out? Like, I'm not getting... I'm not here for you to, like, exploit anyone. But, like, it's something that you hearing that I ain't hearing. You know, because you say undercover Listen, brother. I ain't been hearing that because I ain't trying to have my ears. This ain't hearing. This is seeing. Okay. I'm at the club. It ain't no way you got your pants literally like all the way down here. It ain't no way you on the back of your homeboy butt like this. Mm. Like, it's no way. Like, I'm not a bad looking girl. Mm. I think I got a nice ass, all that. When mm. I come in... <laughs> A nigga looking at him, he ain't even paying me no money. No, that's real. Yo, thank you. Man, that, so, I that, mean, there we I'm go. just like, what's there going go. on? There we go. That's something I can actually say. I don't understand, yo. When, like, me and the homies walk out, and every time, every time we walk out, I be trying to figure this out. Like, <clears throat> I be like, why the hell is people looking at other guys or really worried about who's walking in the club when it's a plethora of females dancing with females. Mm -hmm. And niggas is dancing, I and mean, niggas is standing around waiting for someone to bump them so they can in engage in some type of confrontation or argument versus seeing what's up with this female, getting accepted or rejected. You want to get some type of attention from another guy. I don't understand that. Um, I think that's gay. Yes, I think that's gay. And I'm happy that a female actually says something that I've been waiting for someone to actually say. You know, um, I feel as though you got this whole thing that happened with this guy in West Philly. I'm pretty sure you seen on the gram where it was some, some guy saying that he had a, a, a transgender as a girl, as his girlfriend. No, the boy from, um... I don't know, boy, but he got the, the ring on. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, on his Instagram, and so many niggas be on his Instagram. You, that's why I say this you feel shit me like I just, look like you feel me like I don't even be I don't even know boy name I, I just go said, on this page just me? to watch the niggas come on here you feel me like because I know they coming and uh, it's like it's crazy she know they coming like and and and, and 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 to be honest with you it's almost like they're exposing themselves in in, in a way because it's like what are you are. looking what are you looking what are you looking for in this type of person if you already know what type of person the person is 
that right. makes sense. You know he's gay, so what, what do you want his page? Like, okay, I can't wait to see this person post this. Like, why are you so excited? Like, that's almost in the sense of you saying, like, why are you offended if, if you don't go this way? Right. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I, I don't understand that shit. Uh, but as far as this whole relationship thing goes with this, um, social media, how you feel like that happens? Like, do you feel like social media is taking over to a point where you can't even be in a relationship? Or is it a distraction? It, it, Let me it, say that, a distraction. Let me say it's, that. it's just everybody just live for the gram. Like, nobody, you can't be regular no more. You can't wear regular <laughs> shoes. You can't, you, you can't, it's like you can't be yourself. Like, mm. you have to get on live and put makeup on. <laughs> Like, when I get on live, my hair ain't done. You get what I'm saying? Like, I just want you to see me. It's just a bunch of fake stuff that goes on on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it just changed the game. It actually messed the game up. Because I'm telling you, it ain't no, it ain't no niggas out here for the bitches. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just a mess. Like, and it's just like, you can be real, you can be real, a hundred, keep it real. People want to knock you for doing it. But yet, if you're doing something fake and being somebody that you're not, they're going to respect you for you that. That for don't it. make sense to me. Absolutely. I don't understand it. And um, it's something that <clears throat> I was asking as far as the distraction goes. Uh, the people that are in DMs, the people that are liking your stuff, do that? Like, like I, I, don't, I don't know your, your personal life, but like, do you feel like that type of stuff can really get in the way of things? Because all I hear is, yo, man, Instagram fucking up people relationships, yo. If it wasn't for these DMs, if it wasn't for this, face, if it wasn't for like comments and all this extra shit, like people wouldn't be caught up or people wouldn't be, you know, caught up with the Joneses or keep, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, right. like, like I'm trying to figure out like from a female perspective, do you feel like that's a distraction or it's just a bullshit excuse? I just think it's an excuse because I mean, I just, like I say, if you real and you who you are, then the DMs and none of that shit would mean nothing. It's an app. That's just who you are. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you be the same person who you are online, offline. Yeah. Now, I remember uh, like an incident happened, right? Because I know everyone argues on the gram, yo. And I don't understand it, though. I don't. Like, like let me ask you this, though. Because I see, um, for example, Quilly. We talk about Quilly all the time. I ain't gonna say we, like me and you had this conversation, but like the people talk about Quilly a lot, you know. And he talks, yeah, he, he knows he's the bit. And it makes me think, like, like, what is it that the Graham has that people want? And it's not likes, it's something. Like, is it a verification? Like, I'm, the reason I'm so, like, stuck on this Graham thing, because I really wanted this to be a conversation, because I know a lot of people want female perspectives on it, like, as a guy, you know, I can give a fuck about the gram. Only thing I really care about for the gram is my show. Right. You know, I barely post pictures of myself anymore. You know, I post other people I'm promoting, but I'm trying to figure out, like, what is it that, that, that people is sucked in for, for the gram, like? It's entertainment. That's just like people who follow celebrities. Like, I don't follow celebrities mm. because I feel like not that I'm jealous or I'm hating or anything, but people keep keep up with that. And they feel like I got to maintain that certain image. I got to be that person. I want to be that person. And I just feel like when you following them, you follow, you being a follower. Because mm. you trying to do what they're doing. And you can't mm. do what they're doing. Because they're on a whole nother level than you are. And you got to stay down until you come up. So what, then, what, then what if people actually oppose it and say, yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually following these people so I can be motivated? Now, what if you got those type of people? Because at the end of the day, you don't know. I mean, actually, sometimes the gram can actually give you an insight of a celebrity life that you never thought you would imagine or imagine seeing. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know who your, your male crush is or whoever, whoever. Like, for example, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, what bad is. Rihanna. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see myself seeing Rihanna the way she was if it wasn't for the gram. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, so you be like, oh shit, like Rihanna posting this, like, oh, I, I need to see this because I know for a fact she ain't texting me these pictures, so let me go on the gram and see it. So I think people look at things for that sort. Will Smith, he motivates me, you know? I don't know ball. I'm nowhere near ball level, like you said. But like to see him achieve certain things, it's like, yo, whenever I get this bread or I get to this point, I want to be able to say I did this. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I don't know, I'm different, for, um, different strokes for different folks, but 
you know, I just wanted to get your perspective on that. Well, motivation and following is two different things. Mm -hmm. Like you can, def somebody can definitely motivate you. You can be on Instagram and follow somebody because they motivate you. The things that they say, it gets your day started. It gets mm -hmm. you popping. It gets you, it gets you to that place. So I believe in that. But like I'm saying, you got so many people that they got to have this kind of car or they got to have this kind of bag or they got to shop at this place no. or go to this place because they're following the people on Instagram mm -hmm. instead of saying, I want to do this because this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So it's just to me, it's just like a big everybody just following and just watching what people doing, copying. I look at me. I didn't start a ten dollar platter. I got the whole world I doing ten dollar platters. Like that and that's cheap. Customer appreciation. I had everybody doing customer appreciation. But that don't bother me because that means that I'm a trendsetter. That mm -hmm. means that people are inspired by what I'm doing and they like that shit. And they want to do the same thing. So come watch me. If I'm motivating, mm -hmm. then that's cool. But I think motivating and following is just two different things. Mm -hmm. it, it just... Mm. No, I'm, I, I like I like motivation, but I don't like following people just to say, Oh, he with that girl this week? Oh. Right. That type of stuff, like that nosy stuff, I ain't none of that. No, right, right. Cause like it's like it's almost like you trying to include yourself in their life, you know, and damn well you damn even right. exist. Right. I see exactly where you're coming from. Well, <clears throat> I'm gonna actually finish this chicken off um, behind the cameras and everything. We just had a lovely discussion on her business. We had a discussion on a lot of bullshit entertainment. You know, the entertainment as far as Jesse Smelly because at the end of the day, she feel like he lied. I feel like it's two sides to a story. You know, charges dropped for Cardi. I mean, Cardi B talking about she drugged, um, um, drugged and robbed people. And then we talked about this whole Instagram situation. You know, guys being on some undercover brother stuff. You know, people seeking attention, validation. We did a lot of things for episode 14. And also, one thing I didn't do is finish this chicken. I'm gonna keep talking about this chicken because I love chicken and I'm black. So uh, the episode 14 of the Dab Hard Show, we got Niche 215, Niche's Kitchen. For those that are interested in her um, platters, let them know where to find you at. Um, you can reach me on Instagram, Niche's Kitchen underscore or Niche Kitchen, well, Niche 215. Um, you can also call me, 215-713-5117. Place your orders. It's lit. It's mm -hmm. popping. I promise you won't be disappointed. I ain't disappointed in that. I got this water, so this is magic. You got juices? You got juices? You got anything? I do. I, I have peach teas, like peach teas. And she got peach teas and all that, man. But this water good, so just imagine with the peach tea and the lemonade good. You feel me? <laughs> niche 215, Niche's Kitchen, man. We here to stay. And she's the first female entrepreneur on my show. I'm sorry. First female entrepreneur cook on my show. You feel me? Yes, we had a female on the last episode, Patrice for Take Action Tutoring. But we here to stay and y'all already know how I go to Dev Hall Show.